of all Eagles on television, they there is LaShawn McCoy. Yeah. Shady, I'm watching the tape and I'm disgusted. Mm -hmm. I'm disgusted. I'm not disgusted because there's a lack of effort. I'm not disgusted because they made him quit. I'm disgusted because what I am seeing from this team from top to bottom, from coaches in the booth, from coaches on the field. I'm disgusted with the product that the Eagles are putting out on tape. Right. You as the all-time rushing leader whose jersey will be retired here in the next 12 Ooh. or so months. Yeah, How do you feel? Are you disgusted? I'm hurt. <laughs> yeah, I'm hurt, man. <laughs> I, you know, I love to talk trash. It's been my thing. As a player and as retired, I talk trash. That's what I do. Yeah. I can't even talk trash. I sit right. there and be quiet. Mm -hmm. Right? I watch the game. You know, I'm at a little sports bar. People, mm -hmm. hey, Shady, how you doing? Not right now. Right? <laughs> <laughs> but then I hear them say little jokes. What about them Eagles? Bro? I can't say nothing back. It's hard to watch. When I watch this team, we can't run the ball. We mm. can't throw the ball. Mm. We can't play no defense. No, can't right? do that. Can't we do lost that. to... Can't. The Arizona Cardinals at home. That happened. That was bad, bad. That happened. You know what? But maybe we get over some things, sure. right? Then we go to New York and we lose to the Giants. Ugh. Two teams that's trying to lose. <laughs> that's trying to get draft picks. Uh, so I just think, I think right now where we're at is that we are living off of the names on the paper. Mm. Right? When you look at the Eagles roster, you see the names, you see the quarterback. Mm -hmm. You see the wide receivers. Mm -hmm. You see the offensive linemen. Mm -hmm. On defense, same thing. But we're not playing like that. So it's, I, we're... I don't even know what to say. <laughs> I mean, I had all these notes here. I, the, the thing is, we're not playing Eagle football, Shady. and it's hard to watch. Shady, I have watched, Ooh, I would I say, pain in my dog. every Whoa. Eagles game since I had been a part of them the last nine years, mm. since 2013, however long ago that's been. <sighs> you've watched a lot of Eagles games. You've played in just as many as you have watched. Uh. LaShawn McCoy, is this is bad or as low as you felt about your Eagles in a long time? Absolutely. Mm. We were winning games like this. It was close games, but we're still finding ways to win. We're not even having a chance to do that now. Now, like, the bum teams is, like, actually, like, beating up on us. Mm -hmm. and we can't respond. I, I miss my flag. I miss oh. my <laughs> right? Oh. I, I, I miss Slim here, the bird. He I miss here in a minute. I, a John, I came with my diamonds. He got his diamonds. He's not even here. Oh. So, yes, if you ask me, it's the worst it's ever been. Yes. Mm. This is worse than when we were 4-12 and 12 with the yeah. Eagles, right? Ooh. Because we're such a, they're such a good team yeah. now. True. And I really learned, Joy, that... I am a bigger Eagle fan than I thought I was. Mm -hmm. Playing, it's like, I'm, come on, Shady McCoy, you know what it is, of 25. Of course. When I retire, I say, yo, I'm really a, I'm really a diehard Eagle fan. Mm -hmm. And right now, I have nothing to talk about. Me and my group chats are silent. Mm -hmm. silent. Mm -hmm. Ain't nobody in the group chat no, talking about nothing. Slim. Matter of fact, Jeremy Macklin, yep. he called me yesterday. Oh, no. Right? I'm thinking about the kids, about my kids, about life, real estate. It's, he says, bruh, what we doing right now? <laughs> <laughs> we terrible. Yeah. And then when I said... Yeah, you're right. We right. So, I don't know. Hopefully these guys got an answer. I'm just, I'm devastated. I'm hurt. Terrible. Devastated. Hurt. Those are all the words that LaShawn McCoy has used rightfully so. The play, it speaks for itself. But, Joy, should the Eagles be disgusted? <sighs> disgusted is such a big, big word. It is. It is. Yeah. Uh, it, it doesn't feel like it's their year. Doesn't feel like it's their year. I'm going to sprinkle maybe some optimism on it. Okay. Uh, I don't want to see Slim. I know James... Not like <laughs> well, I'm not rooting against the Eagles, but do we bring Slim back if they beat the Bucks? At this point, yes. No, no, they gotta earn it. I'm they not. I'm, I'm not suggesting. <laughs> to be clear, I'm not suggesting this. Um, anyone, anyone, Joy, anyone. <laughs> well, remember we talked about you know should they blow the Giants out, and I was trying to say it is all professionals on the other side of the field. They all get checks on Tuesday. They you know they all have their buys and they have the contracts and all that stuff. They have all that, too. So you can get slapped any, any weekend, any different kind of way, especially if you're not playing good football. Disgusted. Here's the thing with the, with the Eagles. They're too good to be sad, and they're too bad to be happy. Because for all of this, at one point in the season, you were 10-1. 10-1, and, and, and you're still in the playoffs. Mm -hmm. So, and you could still win a playoff game. Now, I know the aspiration was to get back to the Super Bowl and win a Super Bowl, but... And I'm not trying to be optimistic here. I'm just saying the facts. Factually speaking, they were 10-1 at one point in this season. Mm -hmm. And they are in the postseason. Mm -hmm. They're going to play. They could win. And so all of this, you were in the Super Bowl last year. You come back this year. You have an up-and-down season. And say you win a playoff game. Now, they might lose, too. Very well could lose. But let's say they win. Is that... I, is disgusted the word that we want yeah, to use to describe yes, that? Yes, yes, like, yes, because, yes. Because of the aspiration? Because I'm of the saying, expectations? Like right now, because I, I, I love what you're doing. I, I, I thank you, first of all. I mean, that's just, that's just, that's just <laughs> how I, I see it. it. Instead of all, can, you see, can you see my Eagles going to a, 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 a conference game? Okay, so I, this, only, I ain't talking about Tampa, because they bad, too. They, 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 <laughs> we talking about Shabir Rainford get paid. He had 130 
32 yards on 32 uh, passes. I'm not talking about him. I'm just saying, do you think the Eagles could be, not even win, can we beat at a conference game? I don't, I don't know. I don't think so. But let's say they do. Let's just, let's just be optimistic and say they but do. But we can't. Yeah. We I'm can't. not even trying to be optimistic. I'm just saying they could. Like, they could win this they weekend. Could. They could. They could. We could. Just, let's weekend. just pretend. Let's I just, mean. like, let's go to a little zen place. Let's all, yeah. They could win this weekend. So that means you went to the playoffs, uh-huh. then you went to the Super Bowl, then you went back to the playoffs, won a playoff game, and let's say you lose in the divisional round. So you have some adjustments you need to make next year. It was a bad year. You fought through. You found a way to win a playoff game, and then you go off into the horizon. I, Mike, I guess my question I is, why are we so serious about the Eagles? You, because because we, we're a serious team. Ooh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. You no, no, no. serious? No, 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 why no, no, no. the rest of us? Philadelphia is the only place where you where, where, where saying they're going to get booed or get snowballed, yeah. right? <laughs> So that was the only place where we gonna boo the team. If we win at halftime, you still gonna get booed. It's a serious place to be. Yeah. That's why guys like Ben Simmons couldn't make it. Correct. Everybody can't make it in Philadelphia. Talk you about know what I'm saying? It. Either you can make it in thick skin or you can't. Yeah. So my thing to you is like, I hear what you're saying. I love it. Thank you. I hope that everything you say is right. But when you watch us play, when you watch us yeah. it's bad. lose yeah. to the, the Arizona Cardinals who don't want to win, we watch us lose to the Giants. No, no. When you watch us get blown out by blown the out. Giants, blown it's out. like, how can you sit there and say that like, you think that well, you guys... That's you crazy. Guys, you guys, because you're the all-time crazy. Leader, you're the all-time leading rusher. I hear the pain in your voice, <sighs> yeah. in your heart, and all that. You guys were a serious team. Mm. Y'all not serious no more. Mm. They y'all, drunk. Y'all, 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 not, y'all not serious no more. But we still kind of, we still kind of lo- serious. Nah, losing to the Cardinals, then blowing out, getting blown out by the Giants. That you guys are not a serious football team. I don't even know if the coaches is taking it serious. To be honest with you, Ooh. this is disgusting, and it's a couple reasons why it's disgusting. It's disgusting. Number one, because this is not the Philadelphia Eagles. Mm. This team was once 10 and 1. Yeah, we can sit up here and say they weren't playing the right football, but they was 10 and 1. Mm. The best team in football, we was up here saying. Mm-hmm. Then, as of late, you have lost four out of your last five or five out of your last five six, out of six. Or whatever it sure may be. It correct. This is not the Philadelphia Eagles that we thought was going to be competing this season. Nah. So you should be disgusted from that standpoint. Anytime you have a bad game, anytime I had a bad game, I could not sleep. Mm. I was disgusted. You out here dropping balls, looking crazy. That's not you. And that's the Philadelphia Eagles right now. This is not y'all, right? So you guys should, when you walk into the locker room, feel disgusted. This this is crazy. Number two, you should feel disgusted because you go out there, your number one wide receiver get hurt. Mm. Who knows what's going to happen with my dog? Mm -hmm. Your quarterback dislocate his finger. Mm. Who knows what's going to happen with him? Mm -hmm. So... You already Bumping playing Smith. bad. Mm-hmm. Ankle injury. Ankle injury. So you already playing bad with your starters. Now, your starters hurt. Mm. <laughs> you should feel <laughs> disgusted. There's, there's no and, way and around this. this. Here, Shady, can I? Can I um, what are you going to say? The reason the Eagles must, must feel disgusted is because the Giants made them quit. Who, what? Literally. I'm not making this up, America. Jalen Hurts. Didn't play much in the second half because the score was so out of hand that Nick Sirianni said, you know what? Tapping. I'm Mm. tapping. I'm done. Get him out the game. Made him quit. Kelsey, Lane Johnson, they weren't in the game. Mm. A.J. Brown had to leave with an injury. Mm. The Giants made them quit. That same Giants team that quit last year, they made the Eagles quit. Mm. Shady brought it up. It's a meaningless game. Meaning. Giants didn't even need to win. Giants didn't even want to win. For the sake of the Giants, it was better that they lose for the sake of their draft capital going forward. And they made the Eagles quit. Jalen Hurts on the sideline with dislocated yeah, yeah, yeah. A.J. Brown getting bad knees. And y'all just did Tyrod Taylor going up and down the field, up and down the field. Saquon Barkley getting busy, running over safeties, re shit. Uh. Just getting carried into the end zone. Mm-hmm. It was disgusting because of what they put on tape. We've been in these situations after a game where you got to look at the tape and you're scared to even look at it because you're like, ah, I know what that looks like. Ah, I know what that looks like. That is true. It was disgusting, embarrassing, repulsive. It was gross, LaShawn McCoy. It was gross. But Nick Sirianni, he's the man at the top, Shady. Mm. So I have a question for you because I was reading, I think it was the Philadelphia Inquirer today, and they were saying that Nick Sirianni and all head coaches They should be fired after the humiliation against the Giants. Yeah, well, that that part right there, now that's Philadelphia at its finest, finest. right? Before Andy Reid got there, they were not a good team. Mm -hmm. They were not running, they're not functional, none of that. He came, he saved the day, and at one point, they want him to leave, right? So that's Philadelphia for for you. When any sports, Eagles, Flyers, Sixers. Can you still believe in Sirianni? I I think, yeah. Like, Nick Sirianni's a really good coach. And the thing I I have an issue with reading that is that 
He ain't out there catching no passes. He ain't out there making no checks. He ain't out there throwing no balls. He ain't blocking nobody. He's not making no tackles. Mm -hmm. The same Nick Sirianni that we've seen each year take this team and get better and better and better. Players that were young and wasn't as good. We watched them develop these players, get better and better and better. Now it's at a point where the coaches are at blame and so are the players. Yeah. So what, are we going to fire and cut every player out there? No, you're not going to do that. Mm -mm. Same way with the, You shouldn't do the same with these coaches. I do think that we need to have uh, some changes in the coaches. Not mm -hmm. with Nick Sirianni, right? But some of the defense coordinators, mm -hmm. they seem like we're, on the, we're not on the same page, right? You just show clips of oh. Hassan Reddick, who's fired our best player. That's the surface. Why is he covering, right? I would love to see him out there trying to cover, cover me, mm -hmm. right? I, I don't want to block him, and he don't want to cover me, but he's doing it. Even on offense, we need to find somebody where, I mean, they just said, I'm not saying fire, but I'm saying we need to see some, some different some differences. We need to see some adjustments because we need to have an offense that's a little bit easier for Jalen Hurts. Mm -hmm. This year, he's struggling, we're struggling. And you look at guys like Dak Prescott, you look at guys like Brock Purdy, let's just stick to Dak Prescott. However we think about him, I think he's above average quarterback. I think this year he's playing at elite level, right? But when you're really watching the way they run his offense, like, they make it easy for him. There's some plays he's making that's really hard. That, that, that's, that's more of his him making a good play, making a good pass, right? But a lot of that stuff is, you see CeeDee Lamb, he's everywhere. CeeDee Lamb's a top three receiver in the league. Mm -hmm. He's everywhere. So my thing is, why we don't have uh, uh, A.J. Brown moving around like that? Right? A.J. Brown and, and C.D. Lamb, they, mm -hmm. they're the same boat. They're, the same, they're eating the same food, right? Same tax bracket. Put them in the same position to win. Same thing with, with um, Smith yeah. and Smitty. Yeah. We don't do that. So, yes, I do think that we do need to have some different adjustments in the coaching as far as the coordinators. I think Nick Sirianni deserves to be our boss, to be our leader, and be our head coach. Yeah, I agree. And I think Sirianni has had some moments that are certainly questionable. And this year has not been his best year. That said, as I mentioned earlier, not his best year. They were 10-1 and one at one point. Mm -hmm. They are in the postseason. He was in the Super Bowl last year. They were in the postseason the year before that. Before this six-game stretch, he was 33-12. and 12. That's the second best in the NFL from the start of 2021 through Week 12. One game behind the Chiefs, pretty good team, who were 34-11. and 11. Mm -hmm. He's had a really awful, disgusting, some might say, mm -hmm. six-game stretch. We're going to fire the entire coaching staff because of that? That's, that's why. Well, no. Now, to, when I asked earlier, why are we putting Philadelphia on this pedestal? I'm saying that in, in sort of a snarky way, but I'm also truly asking that. Like, what is the standard there? Because you resetting coaches every couple years, you, re, you cleaning out the building every couple years, I don't think that's a recipe for success or sustainability either. And you do still have a young quarterback. I think they need to make some adjustments with the offense. They need to make it easier for him. Everything I'm, you've said, I agree with. They got to fix the defense. I'm not saying there aren't things they need to fix in the offseason. Clearly, they obviously do. Mm -hmm. but, but, and I haven't, I haven't been a fan of Sirianni this entire time. But I can't deny his, his record. Yeah, I can't deny the results. Nick Sirianni is a winning coach. So if you want to panic and go into firing people, you do what you feel like you need to do. I'm just curious, to, curious as to what do you think is better. What is the standard there? Because everyone's not going to win the Super Bowl every single year. Of course, that's the aspiration. And of course, when you've just been in the Super Bowl, that's the aspiration. But zoom out a little bit. And listen, I love Super Bowls. I love winning. I love championships. I love results. But I also like consistency. That's right. I also like coming to the table every single year, giving yourself a chance. You know who doesn't have a chance? All the teams who aren't in the postseason this year. You know who does literally have a chance? The Eagles. No, none of us think they're in a position to go back to the Super Bowl this year. They might not even be in a position to win a postseason game. But you're there. So my argument is, what are you looking for? Are you looking for consistency? Are you looking for growth? Are you looking for player development? Are you looking for an opportunity to win because you're in the postseason? Because so far, that's what Nick Sirianni has offered you. I would say I'm looking for competency. For competence, rather. And I'm not seeing that. Now, would, would I say keep Nick Sirianni? I would say yes. Mm -hmm. Because Nick Sirianni is a sure of the post to an unknown. But you got to get rid of 90% of the coaching staff. 90%? So, yeah, I'm keeping, I'm keeping Jeff Stoutland, offensive line coach. I'm keeping Michael Clay, special teams coach. Outside of that, I'm not go. tethered to nobody. The running back coach? What? You, you can keep him, too. You know better than I. So I won't I won't. I'm saying, his, I mean, both his running backs last year. Was, Correct. Miles Sanders got busy. And this year did well. Okay. Keep him. But, like, all the linebacker coach, good on him. Yeah. Safeties coach, defensive line coach. And it's just because the Eagles aren't put, players aren't being put in positions to win. Mm -hmm. For the, all the reasons I might hear of keeping Nick Sirianni, I would ask very simply, what's the reason to keep him? What's the reason? And I don't just want to hear it because they're winning. Mm -hmm. Why are they winning? And now why are they losing? Because that's the predicament the Eagles are here in the first place. Yeah, but the Eagles are 10-1. Mm -hmm. Well, then they were 10-2. Yeah. 
and then they were 10 and three, and then they were 10 and four, and then they were 10 and five or 11 and five, and now here they are at 11 and six. All right, so go ahead. So wait, so every year he's been in the league, he's been a, a playoff team, correct? Mm -hmm. Okay, so that, that's, that's hard to do for one, right? And if you want to, see my thing is replacing it. Nick has been so good, how are you gonna replace that? So we talk about growth. Jalen Hurts from where he started to now, you could never tell me that he'd have been this. I'm gonna be honest, Jalen Hurts. From, from the beginning. Don't you think he's done this? I mean, but that, that, that's... Yeah, this year. That, this year, but that's football, though. Like, I, I didn't have a straight, great career this every year. How many coaches have a great career every... I mean, a great year every year as a coach? It don't happen like that. So my thing is, for Nick Sirianna's off year to be in the playoffs, mm -hmm. to be a game away from winning our division, I'm taking that. But here's my problem, Shady. Okay, we, we've had this tension all I'm take, season I'm taking long. That. My problem with all of this is, why are they so bad? It is not just because their quarterback got hurt. Yeah. Bengals, uh, Chi uh, not Chiefs, Bengals, the Vikings, the Colts, right? Yeah. The Eagles. I'm showing you why they're so I, bad, I, I and it. they haven't done but, anything but every, to but, fix it. Okay, but everybody goes, so look, Andy Reid, I think Andy Reid's the... the I don't know Coach Brad and mm -hmm. They struggling. They, they, they don't sure. up. They don't like a disciplined team. They don't like a smart team. But you have your one. Oh, let's, let's just go to all these things. Yep. Okay. Doug Peterson, I think he's a beast as a coach. Mm -hmm. Look at them. They ain't going to play But off. you have a why. You have a H why. However you, however you want to point the finger, I'm going to tell you what it is. This is the we look at all these top coaches, though, and they have years where they don't, they don't do well. They look bad. I don't disagree. I'm just uh, saying I don't like the reason for why the Eagles are doing bad because Nick Sirianni could fix well, this I'll, reason. I will tell you the reason why the Eagles are, being, are bad right now. Nick Sirianni's not Andy Reid. He's not Mike McCarthy. I'm not talking about a winning coach. Andy Reid call plays. Mike call plays. Mm -hmm. He does not. He depends on his offensive coordinators to call the plays. He depends on his defensive coordinators to call right. the plays. So he's not really in on a lot of those play callings. This is his first time as an NFL head coach that he's been through this. He lost two coordinators, defense and offensive and coordinators. These course. are two new dudes that came in here. Nick didn't bring them with, with him. You understand what I'm saying? So Nick hired these, these offensive coordinators and defensive coordinators. That is with the Colts. That is with the mm -hmm. Cardinals, right? You lose that. Now you come in here, and that's why you see the, the way the defense is struggling. You fire that coach or put him in the, in the box and bring in, you know, another coach to run a defense. He's doing stuff totally different. You just show clips with the first defensive coordinator. He rushing. This defensive coordinator, he dropping. What are we doing? He's the best pass rusher on the football team. The way you build and have success as a football team, your assistant coaches have a lot to do with yes, that. Sure. A lot to do with that. And when you start and you talk about coaching, to me, it is not Nick. Nick will throw a challenge flag here. I want to go for it here. Mm -hmm. But other than that, the responsibility is on the other coaches, and that's during the week also. So then why they are, are doing a so terrible job. So then why job. are you keeping Nick? You got because if he's not calling plays offensively nor defensively, the camaraderie of the locker room obviously is not translating right now, nor can we see it right now. The defense hasn't been great. The offense hasn't been great. Then why are you keeping him? Because I'm not saying don't. I'm just asking why. Well, and then you replace him with who? With an offensive mind who does call plays. And maybe he's terrible. And plays. maybe he doesn't work well with Jalen Hurts. And maybe he doesn't blend well with Philadelphia. Maybe the team doesn't respond to him. Whenever you are replacing someone, especially someone who has had results, and we, we keep saying this, oh, like all he does is win. That's the whole point. That's all that matters. All, and nothing else matters. Win, you lose. You win, you're in the playoffs, you win, you get to the Super Bowl, that's how it works. That's all that matters. We can get into all this other nuance, that's for players. For coaches, do you win, do you lose? You can run a dumpster fire of an organization. If you win, don't nobody care. Mm -hmm. We have a lot of examples of that. For players, it's very different. You can't just win, you gotta put up numbers, or you gotta do this, or you gotta do that. So when you're talking about coaches and replacing him, and I don't even know why I, like, I'm, I feel so adamant about this, I'm just like, these are the results. It is hard to replace assistant coaches. And when you have success, your assistant coaches leave. It has nothing to do with who the head coach is. That's why, that's why good coaches, that's why great all-time coaches have Coaching trees. Correct. But Subscribe here to get the latest from Speak and go watch a few segments from our other shows on FS1.